Hello everyone, my name is Suboptimal and I make videos about web development and productivity. In this video, I'll go over the basics of Gridsum, a static site generator that helps you create websites using Vue.js and GraphQL. Now I do want to give a heads up that this video is more of a tech talk than it is a coding tutorial. I'll help you understand how Gridsum works as a static site generator or SSG, but I won't be diving as much into the coding aspect. More specifically, this video is going to be split up into three parts. First, we'll look at the underlying architecture of static sites versus dynamic sites. And this is to help you understand when to consider building a static website. Then we will dive into Gritsum and learn how it simplifies the process of creating static websites. And finally, we'll look at two static website examples made with Gritsum so that you can see exactly what is possible with this framework. And before we get started, I'm going to ask for one small favor from you guys, and that is to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing for more content just like this. So let's start off with a brief little example of what is a static website versus what is a dynamic website. And I'm going to be using this blog post on GitLab, which is going to be linked in the description below if you want to get the full details. So here we can just see real quickly like what the pros and cons of a static versus dynamic website are. A static website takes a lot less time to load, and that is because it doesn't have to make a lot of server calls. Maybe you're logging into Gmail, right? You have to log into Gmail and then it's going to make sure that you have authorization. It's going to check the database and once you have authorization, it's going to log you in. And once you're logged in, it's going to hit the server to get your emails, all the emails that you have, and maybe it has to go to the database to do some lookups. And then it's going to return that data and it's going to display it. Now that is different from a static website because in a static website, everything is already on the server. So you don't need to have any databases. You don't need to have any lookups. Obviously there are some cons to this. And the first con you can think of is that you can't have dynamic content. All the information that you want in a static website needs to be available when you are building and deploying your website. And so that makes you wonder, when do you actually use a static website? And the most common places where you would use a static website is, for example, a blog, right? When you have a blog, you have, say, 100 blog posts. You know they're not changing unless you add a new blog post. So when you add a new blog post, you have to redeploy your website. But once you redeploy it, your blog post itself is not going to change, right? Another example would be if you want to have docs for a specific technology or framework, then it would make sense to use a static website. So when you're first getting started with Gritsum, it can be pretty confusing because there's a lot of things that it offers. But the issue here is you need to know what you need for the bare minimum. For example, it offers the ability to communicate with external APIs. But if you have markdown files stored locally, you don't need that. So there's a lot of extra things that you might not need here. And I'm going to talk about the most core aspect of Gritsum that I found most useful in helping me build my markdown website. So the whole point of Gritsum is that it makes it easy for you to build static websites. Obviously, there are other frameworks. There's Nuxt, there's ViewPress, and there's Gritsum, and there's probably a ton of other different frameworks that you can use. But the main differentiator that Gritsum has is that it builds a GraphQL data layer on top of whatever data you want to display. And how do you specify where Gritsum has to look for the data? Well, there's a few ways you can do so. One way is a Gritsum server.js file. So in this file, if you're querying external data libraries, for example, if you want to query the Pokemon API and you want to create you know, a blog post with the Pokemon API or something, then you can specify how to query the API here and how to add that queried information into the GraphQL data layer. A lot of people don't really want to query the Pokemon API. They probably just want to display some markdown files, or maybe they have a WordPress uh, website where they have all their blog posts and they just want to turn it into a Gritsum website or something, right? And so Gritsum has built some plugins that basically 
do all of that for you. So instead of having to do a ton of code and query stuff manually, Gridsome uh, has a ton of plugins that you can configure inside of your Gridsome config.js file and build the data layer for you. Here's a quick example. So for my blog posts, which are all markdown files, all I have to do is specify that I'm using the source file system, and that's the name of the plugin, and pass in a couple options like where the blog is and the type of the GraphQL instance that I want it to create. And once you do that, you basically have the availability to use this information inside of your source folder. So let's go to some of the pages. Inside of the pages, this is the home page. You'll see here that I have a GraphQL query and this home page uh, basically just displays all the posts. Um, now I'm going to admit that I did skip over some of the other stuff inside of the config.js file, but that's the main point of Gritsum and that's what I really want to convey to you guys is you have information and Gritsum is going to help you build a data layer with GraphQL that you can use to query inside of your SRC folder. And the whole point of Gritsum is you have to figure out which data you want to show and you do so by specifying in either the gritsum config.js file or the gritsum server.js file. Obviously gritsum provides a lot of other features. One very useful feature that you might want to use is um, exploring the data. So here you can see that I created some GraphQL queries and all you have to do is go to your localhost underscore 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 explore URL. Yeah, I mean, this is a great way to see what data is available, see if you've actually set up Gritsum properly. Another really useful plugin is the Gritsum Google Analytics plugin. And all you have to do is go to your config file and add this simple plugin. Google gets all the information. You don't have to go to any of the pages. You don't have to add anything. You literally just have to do this one configuration. Now you guys have like a general understanding of what Gritsum is. I think it's important to understand what you can build with Gritsum. It's easy to kind of get carried away with the technical aspect of something without um, seeing what's possible. And I think seeing what's possible really can illuminate you guys on what you can do with it. So here's my personal website, a little bit of a uh, self promo, I suppose, but nothing's in it yet. Probably gonna post here like once a week or maybe once every two weeks. Nothing really to do with tech, uh, more so about being an Indian American or my journey on becoming a YouTuber and leaving the tech industry, just random things. So this is a very minimal website using Tailwind CSS. And I mean, it also handles uh, pagination, things like that. A more complex example would be gridsome.org. So gridsome.org is built completely on gridsome. So you guys can really see that you can build, you know, pretty cool static websites with Gritsum. Um, both of these i would linked down in the description. So if you want to see the code for my website or if you want to see the code for this website, it's it's down below. That's going to be it for today's video. Uh, I guess this is a long winded way of saying I have a blog now. Just kidding. Um, let me know what you guys think about this tech talk going over the basics of static site generation and how Gritsum empowers you to build static websites. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments section and you know I'll try to uh, help clear them up for you guys. And as always you know be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. I'm really interested in Vue, VS Code, GraphQL, Vim, things like that. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.